Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. I'm very excited to introduce Leah Huxable. She and her sister Eva Thompson have an amazing fundraiser for the Alzheimer's Association. So before we talk about the Alzheimer's, um, your fundraising event, why don't you tell us why is it so important to you and your sister to support and try to find a cure for Alzheimer's? Well, first of all, thanks for having me again. Um, so let's see, in 2013, my mom, Lucy, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease when she was 60 years old. She was um, still a teacher, fourth grade teacher, just vibrant and just a great lady. She had a lot of love to give yet, and um, we were not entirely surprised when this came down the pike because her mom also had Alzheimer's disease. Um, but it was shocking and very, very hard to swallow because of the fact that she was so young. And like I said, she was, she had, she was always doing so many things for other people and she had so much love to still put out in the world and um, it got cut really significantly short. Um, so shortly after her diagnosis, about a year after, she came to live with my family and me in Woodbury here and we cared for her for about three years in our home. And during that time, we had, my sister and I had started working more closely with the Alzheimer's Association. They provide a lot of services for families who are going through this journey and um, it really helped us understand better like what our resources were and um, just the things that we could tap into to help. And because of that work with them, we also learned about a lot of their different programs where they try to get people to um, start doing some advocacy work on behalf of the association to push for federal funding um, so that we could you know, make some more impact. And we started doing some of that stuff. And at the same time, we're trying to do more to fundraise for our local um, Twin Cities Walk to End Alzheimer's. And we had been raising, you know, a little bit of money here and there, but felt like we could do more. And so in 2013, we founded the Bash for Brains. Wow. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so, um, the bash, it actually started out as the backyard bash to end Alzheimer's. And it was in my former backyard in Bailey's Arbor. Um, and it, we put it together in a few weeks and it raised about $7,000. And we thought, wow, we got, we've got something here. So we decided to keep going with it. And so this year will be our ninth year hosting it. Um, and a little and, COVID in between there. Yeah, we had one year off. We say, we say this is the ninth, should be 10th um, bash this year. But anyway, we just, you know, we, we like to throw a party and it, it was a way that we could, you know, bring more light to the disease. So many people have someone that they know who are affected and um, it's, you know, it's just one of those things, it's, it needs to go. It's just a really, really life robbing disease, so. You were talking about the, the journey that the families go through and mm -hmm. the, an incredible journey yeah. and how hard that is on the family and yeah. things like that and, and that you've tried a, the advocacy and stuff like that. Tell us about um, what is that like for a family? Do you so it is, um, we always say that it's, it's like living life on a loop. You know, you're, in, you're sort of in Groundhog's Day with an Alzheimer's patient. And so, you know, having been the, the primary care provider, um, I know it all too well, and then for my in my situation and all of those who are dealing with like younger onset um, parents with younger onset Alzheimer's were all, were often kind of sandwiched between childcare as well. So my kids were really little at the time. I had actually I, did, I only had three of them when when my mom first came to live with us, and they call us the sandwich generation. I mean, it's just bananas trying to care for someone who is you know, their brain is deteriorating. They, they live the same day over and over and over again throughout a day, right? Um, and so unfortunately, and luckily for me, you know, I was young and, you know, have had great support through the community and my friends and the rest of my family. But for most people, they're caring for an Alzheimer's patient when they're older. They um, have a really hard time finding the support that they need and it is exhausting. And often- I just can't imagine. I just, it's just, it's so so hard on the care provider. Um, in fact, the, there are lots of there's statistics out there, and I don't know what the percentage is, but a very high percentage of care providers for Alzheimer's patients die before their patient because of, you know, the fatigue, the stress, and then the onset of disease that comes from all of that. Um, it's 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 devastating to a family. So talking about your mom with the younger age, developing Alzheimer's. 
I think people are surprised that, you know, people as they age, not necessarily are going to get Alzheimer's, but there are um, 80, 99,000 people in Minnesota are living with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. age 85. Mm -hmm. But yet there surprised me a number of younger people, mm -hmm. younger, age 45 and younger, mm -hmm. being diagnosed mm -hmm. with and living with Alzheimer's here in Minnesota. People are surprised by that. Mm -hmm. It's shocking. I mean, we've, like I said, um, you know, through the Alzheimer's Association, we've been able to really, you know, get all, all kinds of great resources. But the biggest one has been the people who we can connect with that are dealing with the same issues and the, the same hardships. And um, it has been kind of mind blowing to, to meet some people whose journeys were even more atrocious than ours just because of the incredibly young onset that some people come you know come to the disease with and um, there are so many different forms of dementia these that are you know constantly we're being kind of I don't know in contact with I guess Louis body dementia is one where they have you know physical and mental you know incapacity no. and mm -hmm. it's just and awful, it's awful, just awful thing so yeah it is shocking and you know with my mom um, the, that was the hardest part, right? Because her light went out so early, so. So hard for you, but yet yeah. you feel like there's some hope yeah. because of your may, amazing fundraiser, Bash for Brains. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah we're, I mean, we're definitely hopeful um, f from a federal level. The, you know, the Alzheimer's Association has helped to increase funding to the National Institutes of Health by hundreds fold um, over the last 10 years. They are making a lot more impact from a research perspective. And um, so, you know, when we, so we do the Bachelor Brains now every year and um, we are starting to raise a, a pretty significant amount of money. Last year we raised $110,000, which that kind is of blew incredible. our socks off. That is yeah, incredible. Yeah. Um, we hope to do even better this year. And so in addition to fundraising towards the Alzheimer's Association, which is significant money for them, but it's not you know the kind of money that changes the you research. You are though one of the top ones here in Minnesota, right? You we usually are. Raising money for Alzheimer's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what we are also doing with the other half of the money with the Bash for Brain Bash for Brains is the Bash for Brains Fund, which is um, kind of handled for us fiscally by the Woodbury Community Foundation. They've been really pivotal in helping us grow the Bash and be able to to start this fund. And the fund is specifically trying to help families who um, can't afford to have in-home respite care. Um, it's it was one of the things that was a saving grace for me when I was taking care of my mom. Um, having someone come in and just give you a few hours of reprieve from this sort of inundating, um, you know, constant, like I said, living like life on a loop um, was huge for me. And luckily our family was able to afford that, but so many families are not. So um, this year at the Bash, we are hoping to give four grants to families who are suffering wow. um, in this community um, with the need for respite. And we were able to um, give our first grant last year to a woman who was dealing with it last, you know, during the time of the Bash last year. And she was so grateful. It, it kind of, um, I mean, she's told me many times over that it changed changed um, her life. And so that's what we're hoping to be able to do this year uh, for grants so that more people can just have the benefit of some rest and it makes all the impact in the world. So. And your event's coming up in September? Yep, September 10th. Um, people can find more information about it at uh, bashforbrains.com. We actually started ticket sales on July 1st and they are on an early bird special until July 15th. You get $15 off your ticket price. Um, the Bash is a super fun event. It's in my backyard and we have um, live music. Dan Rodriguez is going to be playing this year. He is fantastic. Um, we have food trucks. Uh, that's all part of the ticket price. We have drinks and uh, these cute uh, the Fab Tap is going to be here again. They do like cocktails in this Airstream trailer thing. It's very, very fun. We have a huge silent auction and um, it's a great time. So the Bash is 6 to 11. It's an adults only event. <laughs> um, and we hope people will show up because we're trying to make a difference and I think we will. This year we're really hoping for, we have a pretty big goal financially. So, And if they can't be here, they can, they can still get involved. Yep, they can donate online through thebashforbrains.com um, or they can still bid on the silent auction um, virtually as well. It'll all be online a couple days before the bash. So 
yeah, we're excited. It's got to make you feel good, though, to be able to help other people that were in the situation that you and your sisters were in. That's your sister exactly. Were in. Yeah. That's exactly it. You know, when you know what it feels like, you know, what the day to day is like, what it, the impact that it has on the, it's, you know, we, we were talking about this the other night, my sister and I, um, we were up at the cabin for the fourth and all the grandkids were there and, you know, some of those grandkids my mom never even met. Um, and it, it's just, it, that is the piece that is so heartbreaking. It's, it's the little kids who are missing that grandparent um, love and patience, so much better than parents, um, and just exposure to her wisdom and her love. It's just, it's so sad to me. And so we're hoping to be able to obviously eradicate the disease eventually to not have that be the case, but with regards to families locally, you know, it's just, trying to make it a little better for people, so. Well, Leah, I really appreciate you taking time to share your message and, and trying to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, I appreciate it. Appreciate that. We'll be right back with more after this.